is a cancer eating away at the heart of the Imperium. With each decade it advances deeper, leaving drained, dead worlds in its wake. This horror, this abomination, has fought and purpose with functions on an unimaginable galactic scale. And all we can do is try to stop the swarms of bioengineered monsters it unleashes upon us by instinct. We have given the horror a name to solve our fears. We call it the Tyranid Race. But if it is aware of us at all, it must only know us as prey. Able to move swiftly and without sound through even the densest of terrain and concealed by a chameleonic carapace that renders it all but invisible to the naked eye, a lictor can remain hidden until it chooses to strike. It can wait motionless for days, unnoticed by its victims, an unseen herald of approaching disaster. I'm Omen Gone Edge and welcome back to another video. Happy New Year and thank you so much for checking out this brand new tutorial series for painting the Lictor Alpha from the Warhammer 40k tabletop series. This is part one of a three part series where I'll be teaching you how to paint your very own high fleet from the Tyranid Swarm. Before we start, I just want to say thank you so much to all of you who've supported me on Patreon. It really goes a long way and it really helps me and encourages me to keep making videos. And for all of you guys who are free, thank you for tuning in and I would love if you could just like and subscribe because it helps the channel to grow. I really want to see oil paint spread far and wide and everything you do really helps push that forward. Okay, that's a love chat from me, let's begin the tutorial. So when I started this army, I knew that the Tyranid Lictor would be one of my first units and since it's my favourite, I really wanted to get this model right. In general, I think there's some really cool skins for the Tyranids out there, but when I started searching, there wasn't any that stood out to me. A good friend of mine bought me a source book from the board game Xenoshift, and there were a bunch of awesome artwork in that book that I really liked. The Gore Mosquito, for example, is my favourite, and the idea of a giant bug which literally sucks everything from a victim, leaving only the armour behind, is crazy to me. However, the artwork was very grimdark, and although that does fit the theme for 40k, I really wanted to have my model stand out across the table. In the end, I actually settled for this creature from Dungeons and Dragons. So what stood out to me about this image was the use of colour and the gradual blend from a deep maroon into a lime green. The segments with a cyan blue pops out around the tail thingy also drew my attention and since the nids are so full of ridges and lines, it really felt perfect. And this is an area that oils excel in, gradually building up colours through colour mixing and blending. The colours I'm using will now appear on your screen. For the Lictor, we will be starting from a purple exoskeleton and also a sandy yellow carapace, but this video will only cover the exoskeleton. The biggest difference here however is that we won't be using the prime glaze and instead we'll be using a slightly thicker layer of paint over all the areas we'll be painting. Making our mixtures on the palette usually gives us more variation for our shadows, highlights and midtones. However, this is a more traditional way of using oils, with building up your paint in one sitting over time through overlapping layers. to the model so what I'm doing is applying a purple mixture from that violet and dark stone purple 
over the model in all of those areas. This is thinned to about two drops of thinner to uh, four parts of paint. Basically, we're not making a wash, but we are making quite a thin layer of paint, sort of that kind of acrylic consistency. The reason for this is because, because this is an organic model and it's got a lot of soft edges rather than hard lines, um, we can actually start from a really kind of like softer um, base coat as opposed to using the prime glaze which is for more of the harder areas um, and the key with this technique is actually allowing this um, thin paint to dry before we paint over it again and then you can use like a hair dryer as well starting from a purple base is really effective because uh, it actually gives us some more variation and as we start building colors on top of this it will start to see that brighten up and really push but those over underlapping layers are what really what brings the color variation the key for this is just making sure that your colors are still left behind and you can actually see that now on the termagon you can see why it's kind of got a redder a redder base and the lictor alpha has a more purple one and this was actually my first test model to see how i could actually build up on those colors a lot more desaturated than what i end up going for later uh, but I still keep it for the rest of the termagants in my army. So now I'm actually applying a mixture of sandy yellow and brown sienna from scale 75, scale color. And that's going over the armored sections. Now again, this is slightly thicker. This is not a prime glaze. And the reason for that is because we're going to actually leave it to dry. We really want an opaque layer over this because we'll be applying some green into that in the next episode and really bringing those colors up so it's okay for us to just give us that complete coverage it's organic so it can be a bit softer a bit of a softer finish we don't need to edge highlight everything so really just applying those colors on to the model in all those areas using the pre-shade that we applied before to really um, give us that coverage and because it's opaque paint rather than transparent any kind of blotchiness that we developed using the spray can is slowly disappearing as well. Getting into the back as well, all those areas, you can kind of see the consistency as it starts to thin out. And here's a closer shot, closer shot as well um, as I'm going into those areas. Again, it doesn't need to be super thick. You could even start from an acrylic base if you really wanted to, but I'm starting simply from a pre-shade and there's actually no acrylic on this model whatsoever. So it's actually quite freeing to paint this way. Um, you don't have to worry about an undercoat and um, because we're going to be using several different layers as well, we can get away without having to use artist grades. Just creating those brush strokes, it's all about just applying it. You just want to make sure that the layer isn't too thick. We don't want any... Um, blotchiness we just want it to just kind of settle and when we leave it to dry um, or if you want to you can you can use a hairdryer that will basically blend out and soften up as it dries over time so now uh, over that purple skin that we've left to dry for an hour, we then start applying a slightly thinned down version of the Paris red over the model. Now, the reason why we let it dry a little bit is because we do want it to blend on the model, but not too much. And as you can see, I'm getting a really solid opaque um, coverage over the model here. And it's actually really allowing me to just start blending all those areas, adding some warmth onto the skin and onto the flesh um, or rather the exoskeleton to really bring out those colors but I'm leaving certain areas in shadow so certain areas that I don't want it to be uh, super um, saturated with the, the brightness of the Paris red the maroon um, I'm actually leaving in the background and this creates more interest just trying to stick to the more raised areas but following the anatomy of the model i think the tyranid models are great because they actually give you um a lot of guidance as you're painting all of those raised bold areas the forearm the 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 wrist the weird elongated hands um or claws if you want to call them talons uh, those areas um, are really complementary and 
by letting it dry a little bit you can see the kind of texture of the model kind of pushing through the matte paint and you can see how the light volumes kind of bounce off of it as well so um, really really helpful for just getting started and just seeing what you need to do across the model and there's me just applying it onto those areas that we need um, just getting over all those ridges and edges and just making sure Again, you'll notice that I've not been really dry brushing too much. I basically apply it and then once it's kind of settled for a couple of minutes, I then start br dry brushing. You start to see me experiment as I'm painting. Uh, a lot of the time is just figuring out how to approach the model. Um, I don't do a lot of planning beforehand, which I probably could do. Um, I've kind of planned it out in my head. And then when I start painting, I'm starting to like look around the model, guessing places out, focusing on the range areas. But you can see how just applying the paint on there, I can come back to it a bit later once I've figured out how I'm gonna use it and just layering over certain areas. So now I'm going in with some scroll white and Paris red just to increase the saturation and just bring out the highlights again. You can see I'm only keeping it to a smaller area as I start blending up and then we'll basically start dry brushing that and bring the spaces together. Um, and this is what I mean by the overlapping layers because you've got like the mixture below and then you start bringing it up. I'm doing the same thing here on the tail as I start just like bringing the colors closer together. With this, you want to keep your brush strokes very um, light and very soft, making sure that your dry brush is flat as you're applying over these areas and you're spreading the paint across the surface of the model. You're not trying to just remove the edges, you're actually just trying to shift the positioning of that paint across the model. And doing it this way basically gives us that freedom to continue our way around the model learning about it, understanding exactly where we need to add our highlights and add our mid-tones to these areas of the spaces of the model as well. So here you'll start to see me applying that onto the head as well, the same mixture that we used before, um, that Paris red with a tiny bit more um, scroll white. The reason for us starting brighter is because this is the focal point of the model um, and we're trying to bring attention to that area. Obviously, as we move on to the harder armor in the next episode, you'll start to see that build up even more. But just be mindful of just building up that area. You want it to be slightly brighter because that's where you want the viewer to actually look. Same thing for the, I guess the, ta not really talons. I think they're not, they're not really mandibles. I'm not sure what these things are actually called. Uh, these kind of like prey mantis talon things on on his shoulder and how it's basically just kind of raised that's why they're slightly brighter and i'm just following the the geometry the kind of muscular appendages on the the, the tyranid uh, surface as i'm kind of building up and just experimenting playing with how i feel with it a lot of it is just learning so as you're painting you'll probably discover certain things that work and don't work and you can just adjust them again with the oil paint So this is where it starts to get very interesting. Um, I start to apply a bit of a grey onto the model. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to kind of desaturate all of these areas that we're trying to bring attention to, to make it seem like the light is there, or maybe the blood vessels or whatever is in the, the surface, the, the underneath the skin of this model is kind of blowing, is moving through. 
I see the tail as still quite hard, but a softer um, surface than the, the exoskeleton. So you'll have a bit more gradual highlights um, going onto this surface as it starts to blend. And by applying uh, green with a little bit of turquoise, it reacts against the, the red in the Paris red. And we start to get a bit of desaturation, a colorful gray. And this is something we start to continue on to the rest of the model and the other surfaces. And we can play with just using basic gray with a tiny bit of purple or mixing that in with some green as well and creating our own natural gray. And this is the fun thing. As you start painting with Tyranids, you'll notice that there's just some variation between the finishes of your, of your uh, miniatures. Um, I'm very much like happy to have my miniatures slightly different across an army, for at least for the Tyranids. Um, and this basically gives us some more variation between all of them because they're probably slightly different. Um, as they in different areas of the battlefield, the light will hit them differently. They're, maybe not all of them are made exactly the same. There might be some odd differences between them as they spawn. Just adding that highlight, bring it up on the tail and then focusing it forward. And again, a lot of it is just reapplying over the same areas. Once you dry brush, you can apply again. And in this way, it's similar to what we were doing on our Crimson Fist, but we're creating more variation. And it's about just making sure the previous layer shows through even just slightly, using that highlight into all the raised areas to kind of bring out that attention. You can start to see me using the green again on the shoulder pad, oh, well, shoulder pad on the shoulder, and just creating these thin lines and dots and a little bit of stippling to where I'm trying to bring attention to the, the I guess that's a buttock, um, the range area is there as well. And just, again, just reapplying, adding some, some scratches, some texture onto these areas as well, just to bring the surface. And it's really nice because you can see the warmth. Um, right now, it kind of looks like brown, Kind of like a reddish brown but um, as you start to play with that and mix it up you'll start to see the colors really shine through At the time of painting this mini, I was actually watching some Stranger Things, so um, that's TV series on Netflix. So there was actually a few times where I had to pause, um, rewind the, the, the screen just to see the kind of creatures that they come across and how they can actually inspire what I'm creating for the Tyranids and if there's any kind of colours I can steal from those. But for the most part, we're pretty much just sticking to the reference I showed you guys earlier. Now we're just taking our paintbrush and applying it, all of that like slightly lighter green, that really pale green now, over to these areas on the model, the raised areas. You can see we've kind of built it up, we're adding some edge highlights as well. Um, and we're just kind of picking the spaces that would hit the light that are kind of in direct highlight, di direct sunlight um, to kind of embolding those colors here. So a lot of to do with painting is just taking your time and 
just trying to think about where would that light go right now i'm just again i'm kind of where the muscle and the exoskeleton bulges is what i'm sticking to and that's how i'm making my decision but of course we can adjust this later um and we can as we just if we want to we can just blend and start again in areas if we need to but for the most part it ends up being fine just because i'm taking my time i'm not rushing through anything i'm just looking to see what needs adjustment, what needs to be fixed, what needs to be moved. So because I'm using slightly thicker paint at this point now, uh, when we're applying our paint onto the model, we're actually able to blend a little bit as we're moving. So you'll notice I don't just apply it and leave it. I kind of go over a few, an area a few times and this is just shifting that paint around, still using the thinner paint that we applied before, sticking to the Vico Villino. And here you can see after a little, a little while of applying um, how bright the color actually can build up to be. Um, and even though we've been using greens and just slightly bright colors, you can see how that exoskeleton has built up to this slightly more saturated, uh, sorry, desaturated colors, just using the greens there, but it creates, still creates that variation across the model. And you can see how the natural brush strokes that we're using on the model is actually creating this texture um, as we're brushing and slowly moving things around. Now it's just about accentuating those areas where the light would hit, making them slightly brighter, allowing there to be contrast in those er other areas. So here I'm just applying a bit of a um, slight kind of gradient along the arm and then dry brushing it away. You can see how it's like slightly lighter in areas where I'm trying to bring the attention to. Um, I actually end up going over this again when I get on to doing the softer tissue of the, the, the mandible talons. But for the most part, you'll see that it kind of stays as it is. Um, and then I start focusing on the face. Now, painting this tyranid was interesting because I did end up returning to these parts of the skin as we started painting the other elements such as the the carapace but in the next episode I'll take you guys through that as well and then you'll be able to see um, how we get some different variation Whilst you're working on the face, just be sure to allow the light to pull in one area and then just blend out the, as you get further up towards the back, just blend out the shadow. And that will basically create some uh, gradation between where the light is hitting on the surface of the kind of shiny skin 
all the way over towards the back and then you just let the shadow kind of come in here i'm highlighting the rim and it's kind of awkward to paint whilst filming but um you'll see that i kind of start to brush towards the back a little bit just slightly um, as it starts to pick up the colors underneath and creating that kind of weird like brain texture i suppose um on the back and i'll slowly blend that back as well just to make sure it kind of smooths out but for the most part it will stay as it is now And you can see as I start to twist the model, you'll start notice like there's a slight difference between one side being slightly cooler than the other. And that's basically because I'm trying to build light that kind of green the light on the side facing towards us here um, on his left hand side. And I'm just comparing the two sides to see which one has more variation um, and which one would take more of that green light that we're applying over the model. So for these bony ridge areas, I'm going to stick to just highlighting the top. When we blend, we'll be able to spread out that color around the areas and it will start to kind of get that free highlighting. It will just basically allow us to do like less effort as I start spreading it around. But it's actually really nice. The models are just really complemented by oil paints for this reason and just gives us a bit more freedom and variation. Uh, the inside of the leg I start highlighting as well um, you can see that it's got very little um, light it's still painted but very little light shining on it so just on the more raised areas are the areas where I'm starting to focus and bring in more of that color but again I won't really be doing any more than that in that area because it's at the back it's out of direct light it's in the shadow so just to show that uh, that there is some volume and that is the part one so by the end of part one you'll start to see your model start to look around similar to this you can see where the kind of vibrancy is and in the next episode we'll be going over the green so see you soon and enjoy ciao for now